Good morning, still everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm Dr. Christopher Fox. I'm from the University of Sydney. Um, I do live in Melbourne, in Australia. It's the beauty of online teaching. It allows me to live in a completely different part of Australia. My role at the University of Sydney is a senior lecturer in sexual health sexology, and I'm also the pathway coordinator for the psychosexual therapy pathway in the postgraduate program in sexual and reproductive health. Today, I was invited to give a talk on how to present abstracts. The uh, reason for this presentation isn't an academic purpose, it's to inform our academic skills. Um, I'll go through some of the, the structure in writing an abstract, but one of the things we found this year with re reviewing abstracts for this Congress was the lack of organisation and structure in, in the abstracts. So Dr Reddy and Dr Riddleman both thought it would be a great idea that we have a session on how to write an abstract, and in their infinite wisdom, I thank them for choosing me, I'm sure. So today's session, we're actually going to look at the background to writing an abstract, so why this presentation, the purpose of abstracts, and styles of abstracts. We're going, then going to explore the methods, the parts of an abstract and how to write an abstract, resulting in a result, an abstract, so I hope you've all got pen and paper with you, and of course the conclusion, participants will have a better understanding of abstract pre preparation, and participants will hopefully have prepared a sample abstract. So here's an example of an abstract. In the many years of reviewing conference abstracts, I've identified many people, I've identified many people struggle with this concept. Very rarely do conference organisers provide guidelines on how to prepare an abstract. This session, this, this session is to provide a simple guide to abstract preparation. We will consider different types of abstracts as part of the process. Participants will explore the different parts of an abstract and be provided with tips on writing an abstract before preparing their own abstract. At the conclusion of the session, participants, have a, participants will have a better understanding of abstract preparation and will have prepared a sample abstract. If you refer back to the four key headings and the subtopics, I then turned it into the abstract, and that's exactly what we're going to look at today. Now, background, past and present. <coughs> I've actually covered that, so I'm going to keep going forward because we're running out of time. So what is the purpose of an abstract? An abstract is a short, self-contained, powerful summary of your presentation. Short, self-contained, powerful summary of your presentation. It communicates to the reviewers the topic of your presentation. This is the way you get to communicate with us when we review your abstract. You need to persuade the reviewers to accept your presentation. The other purpose of the abstract is to inform conference attendees about your presentation. When I'm looking to attend sessions, I look at the abstract and make my decision to whether your presentation is going to be worthy of my 20 minutes of time or whether I'm going to devote it to somebody else. At this conference we have two, two streams running simultaneously. At other conferences there are up to four streams running simultaneously. I have to make a choice and it's based on the quality of abstract. A well-written abstract will always stand out. In fact, a well-written abstract about poor science will stand out better than a poorly written abstract about good science because it's about the communication of ideas. So it doesn't matter how good we are at researchers, the important thing is how we communicate our ideas to, the, to our peers and to a greater extent the public, but here we're talking about communicating to our ideas. An abstract is a standalone document. It's a standalone piece of information. It is not a series of quotations taken from your presentation. It needs to be coherent. The abstract also needs to be informative, remembering you're selling your presentation to the scientific review committee who are trying to select who's going to be presenting at the conference. It needs to be informative not vague. In actual fact, when I'm reading abstracts and I get to a vague abstract, I wonder two things. Firstly, has the person actually completed their research before submitting the abstract? Which means, well, no, not good enough. And secondly, if you're being vague, what is it you're trying to hide? Which challenges me about the quality of the science. So, 
There are two styles of abstracts, a descriptive abstract. They're short in nature. They describe the work being reviewed. They talk about what the presentation is about, the issue or topics explored, and the reason for the research and the methods or methodology, depending on your discipline. Descriptive abstracts are not what normally gets submitted at a, at a scientific conference. At scientific conferences, we normally submit informative abstracts. They are a substitute for the presentation or the paper in some ways, remembering it's from the abstract that people are making decisions about, is your work worthy of being presented? And then the, the attendees at the conference are deciding from the abstract, is this worth sitting through? So it's also detailed where the descriptive is not as detailed. It contains some of the similar elements. What the presentation is about, the issue or topics being explored, reasons for the research and the methods methodology, and the big difference here is the results and the conclusions are included in an informative abstract. So now I'm going to ask you to stop and before you begin formulating your abstract, check any special requirements. If the scientific committee has stated there needs to be certain subheadings, use those subheadings. If the scientific committee says it needs to be in 12 font times New Roman, use 12 point font times New Roman. If the scientific committee says it needs to be 150 words, do not submit 175 words. These are all reasons for us to reject. Now, when I review abstracts, I'll review up to 100, 150 abstracts at a time for a conference. The first thing I'm going to go through is knock out all of the abstracts don't, that don't meet the basic requirements. Secondly, who is the audience? We need to be aware who are we communicating to. These are the two key things before we begin writing the abstract. So the four parts of an abstract, the background, the methods, the results and the conclusions. This is a general presentation. Again, always check the requirements for the abstracts before you start writing. So the background describes the problem. Why are you doing this research? Why are you presenting this information? Why did you do what you did? Or why are you doing this? Not the presentation, but the, the research. What is the problem or the issue you are addressing? How are, the thing, how are things currently undertaken? What is the difficulty and why? Why has this problem issue not been solved before? And present your hypothesis or research, research question questions in this section. We then have the methods section. It's about what did you do or how did you do it? What kind of approach did you use? What kind of data did you collect? Is it a case study? Is it quantitative research? Is it an interview-based study? What kind of data did you collect? Is it um, interviews? Is it, is it qualitative? How did you collect it? Through surveys, um, through patient surveys, through client clinical sessions. Describe the participants. Who were the participants? How many? And how did you recruit them? Remembering an abstract, we need to be concise. Most abstracts are between 150 and 250 words. The fourth third section is the results sections. You're going to tell us what did you learn? What did you find out? Did your approach work or not? Was the hypothesis supported or refuted? Please remember, hypotheses are never proven. They are only supported or refuted. You also need to summarise the key results. What new information or data is provided in the presentation? Is there, are there any results data which are outstanding? Maybe you want to talk about outliers. And then, of course, we get to the conclusion or the implication session. How does your data relate to earlier research? Who will be affected by these results? What can we do differently or that we couldn't do before? How does this work? How does this work add to the body of knowledge on the topic? Are there any practical or theoretical implications or applications from your, res your results? And what are the implications for future research? Now, due to time limitations, I was going to get you to have five minutes to actually write an abstract based on those questions. However, this is now not going to happen, so I'm going to present some final words of advice. Some people would say I'm mainly retentive. I have kept a copy of every abstract I have ever reviewed. I started reviewing abstracts. My first conference for reviewing abstracts was in 2003. 
I had reviewed over 2,500 abstracts in that time. So in 15 years, I've reviewed 2,500 abstracts. I actually have a file of every abstract I've reviewed for a conference. Um, what have I learnt? Please follow direction. The word limit. Now, some conferences have electronic submission, which automatically cuts you off at the word limit. I think these are the most brilliant pieces of technology ever. It means you can only present 250 words if that's the word limit. As somebody who has to write abstracts, I also know it is extremely frustrating when that piece of, of technology says you're over the word limit and you can't have those last four words and you've got to rewrite your 200 words you've got to fit the four most important words in. And also the style. Different conferences require different styles. There is not one standard style for abstracts. And it's no good whining, whinging or bemoaning that you do one style of research and it doesn't fit the style requirements of the conference. If you wish to present at the conference, you will make your information fit the requirements of the conference. There are some exceedingly good abstracts out there. There are some good abstracts out there. There are some okay abstracts out there. And then there are bad abstracts out there. I've reviewed abstracts which I couldn't even decipher the meaning. And I also understand that most abstracts are submitted to international conferences in English. And for many people, English is a second or third or fourth language. This I can understand. However, again, it's about communicating to the audience and your audience requires English. The intelligent in abstracts will move beyond the basics. When I'm reviewing an abstract, when an abstract talks about the implications of their research or they talk about future research needs or they talk about the, the critical aspects, the things that didn't work or could be done better next time. These abstracts will stand out amongst a hundred abstracts and are likely to be accepted. And the final comment that I'd like to make, if the abstract excites me and I become somewhat aroused, as in excited, the abstract's going to get through. If I'm reading it and I get bored, I'm just going to reject the abstract. I know these words sound harsh. Again, when people review abstracts, they're reviewing multiple abstracts at once and we need some standard and some quality. In future AOFS congresses, we're actually going to have a section on how to write an abstract, the, 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 at least the style requirements and the format. Um, and we're also hoping to have an upload of this presentation. I am out of time. I'd like to thank you for your time. I'm happy to take questions, although I'm going to say I really can't take questions on this topic. It really was only information sharing. Um, there's nothing new that I'm adding. Thank you for your time.